So now that <laughs> Hey everyone, it's Monique Renewed. Welcome back for another video with Miss Lauren. Miss, I keep saying Miss. Mrs. Lauren. <laughs> it's okay. And we're back for the Purpose Driven Life Discussion Series. Number three, right? The yep, days, so number the, three. So I throw over y'all. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Days nine through 12. Hey. Yep, so. Okay. Who wants to take the lead? We're gonna get right to okay, it. Get, get right, right to, to it. it. Get right to it. All right. Day nine. What makes God smile? Hey, mm -hmm. gonna smile a lot today. Right. <laughs> do you even imagine God smiling at you? Do people even think about that? Mm -hmm. Right. Right. No, seriously though. Yeah, God smiles. Mm -hmm. yeah, he wants to. You know, you want to make God smile. Right. right. So yay. So I know for here it says in the book, "Smile on me, your your servant. Teach me the right way to live." And that's Psalms 119, 135 MSG. So it says, the smile of God is the goal of your life. I mean, I would like to want to smile. So I know God would like to want right. to smile, right? And it says here, since pleasing God is the first purpose of your life, it states here that the Bible says, figure out what will please Christ and then do it. I thought that's a. I think that's a good point, you know, mm -hmm. and um, in this in this day that we're starting, um, and so we have some key points that um, that Rick states out here. It says God smiles when we love Him supremely. So how do we love God supremely? Um, I think you know one of the things in the Bible it says, "If you love me, you obey my commandments." So I guess being obedient to God, listening to His voice, will cause Him to smile on you. I yeah. think that's very, very true. And in here also states that God made you to love, God made you to love you, and He longs for you to love Him back. And it also states that He says, I don't want your sacrifices, I want your love. I don't want your offerings, I want you to know me. So God wants you to know Him and have a relationship with Him. So I think that's. Yeah, that's a good point. I think that's a really good point. Um, and here, like you said, right here, it says Jesus called it the greatest commandment. So mm -hmm. that's the greatest commandment, which it also says in here in the book that he said, love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. So back to what you were saying about the, you know, mm -hmm. the commandments, but that's the greatest one of all is to just love, love God, God with mm -hmm. all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. Yep, another key point here was also God smiles when you trust him completely. That's a little hard. <laughs> <laughs> That's a little that. hard. That's a hard one. I'm not going to lie. I think a lot of us struggle with, with trust. trust. Yeah. Uh, just trust alone is a solid. I know. And that was like constant work. Right. One of the points I made, there was, it says there were three problems that could have caused Noah to doubt. Um, have we even gotten there yet? We haven't yeah, got the no. story of Noah. So. We actually hear it says Noah loved God. And the first one with the Supreme says Noah loved God more than anything else in the world. And even when no one else did, the Bible tells us that for his, it tells us that for his entire life, Noah consistently followed God, um, God's will and enjoyed a close relationship with him. So they does discuss Noah in, in the beginning point. Right. But yeah, that if you know the Noah story, go ahead and, 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 and share. Um, right. Yeah. So with the Noah, God told him to build this huge boat because he's going to flood the earth and start over with his family. Um, and what I was saying is when God usually makes a promise, to me, it almost sounds like absurd and like it doesn't make sense in your crazy. mind. It almost right. sounds crazy. <laughs> right, causing you to doubt. It's like, okay, right. is this really from God? And like you said, Noah didn't even see no rain. And it's like, right. what are you even talking about floods? Like flood the whole earth? He hadn't seen an ocean <laughs> lake right. of like water, especially the amount that God's saying is going to happen. Is like, wait a minute, right. I haven't even seen. What are you so, about? And, I'm, and you got me building this crazy big art. For all the animals and stuff like that. So that just made me really think like when God makes you a promise. Yeah. Like the doubt will like Satan is going to use that doubt to try to like diminish your faith. But God uses that same doubt so he can strengthen your faith and um, purify it. So it kind of makes me think about it too. Yeah. And aspects. actually and be able to trust. Right. Continue trusting. to trust like and have that faith like you said. Because mm -hmm. that's hard to trust that what you're telling me. 
it's like okay i gotta stick and have faith that right you're despite guiding everybody me despite else, right. every yes despite everything or even what i haven't seen right exactly that you're telling me i have no what Rain, flood, where? Wait, what? <laughs> it's about 90 degrees. <laughs> it's like it's been like 90 some degrees for the past. Well, I think Noah built it 120 years. It took him 120 20 years. years to build the ark. Can you imagine building a boat for 120 years? <laughs> and I ain't seen no water. I ain't seen not a drop of water. What are you talking about? want to talk about trust. I'm going to keep it doing. I'm going to keep doing. You want to talk about trust. You're like, uh. <laughs> exactly. That's how First of all, start. come year five, I'll be like, am I still doing this? I'll be like, year zero, five months. God, what are you talking about? <laughs> 120 years. I know. Girl. There's 365 days in a year. <laughs> you talk about 120 <laughs> You want to talk about doubt and trust creeping in something serious? You like I would be uh, making all the calculations like you like. Okay. Every species, male and okay. How big is this box? <laughs> Yo, I'm like you gotta be kidding me. But it it says to trust. This is what God wants most from you is a relationship, and then uh, that segment is the trust. And it goes on to also say that in what areas now this is a good question you guys can also comment down below it says in what areas of your life do you need to trust god completely let me tell you something we all got some areas we got a lot of areas <laughs> some of us got a lot of areas of trust like but trust is a big it's a big thing in a lot of people's lives because i mean some people don't even trust just regular people on right so now you gotta trust think, somebody <laughs> that's what i was thinking I think our relationship with other people yeah. kind of makes it like it affects our relationship with God. Like, okay, yeah. I barely trust these human beings around me. <laughs> you want me to? See? <laughs> but it's not the same thing. It's not the same right. thing, right? Exactly. But ex I get, I get the connection of right. how some of our trust for just in people general that you kind of relations that you maybe have built have been broken. So it's like, okay, now I got to trust that when God's talking to me, that what I don't see going, that He sees, that He knows is gonna go on mm -hmm. i don't see he's like i gotta trust that's that. the difference he he knows the beginning to the end yeah right yeah yeah and that's a that was a that's a good one and then now it also says without faith it is impossible to please god so you got to have that faith and that trust mm -hmm. so but the next point that they make um is god smiles when you obey him wholeheartedly and i think that's a that's another one too because wholeheartedly is you know that's all of your being you know what i mean and it states here that um, it says he obeyed God, talking about Noah. It says Noah said, um, it's talking about Noah. It says he obeyed God wholeheartedly. That me that means doing whatever God asked without reservation or hesitation. Oof. It says you don't procrastinate and say, I'll pray about it. <laughs> you do it without delay. And so that's a good, that's. I mean, I have a lie. Some of us be like, you know what? I'll pray about it. <laughs> I'm going to pray about it. How you going to pray about it to the person that told you what to do? <laughs> let me think about it real quick. <laughs> let me think, God. Uh, let me let me just, let me let me go to sleep and pray. Right, I'm going to meditate. <laughs> <laughs> it says you're supposed to do it without delay. Like, get to it. So, that's, that's funny. But it also states here, it says, instant obedience will teach you more about God than a lifetime of Bible discussions. So, if God's telling you something, you do it. Do it. Pure experience. That's going to teach you real quick. You want to Yeah. There have been times where I've disobeyed God and I've seen the, the consequences to my actions. So, pure experience will teach you real quick. That you need to obey it. <laughs> I'm telling you. No, you're right. No, you're right. Obedience... You will definitely get the consequences of not listening. You will. Which is funny because it I goes back to what we were talking about parenting. And like mm -hmm. God is our father. And you know what I mean? Like our parent. Right. And he's trying to tell his child something. And he's telling you, I told you to do it right now. And you don't do it. And the next thing you know, you sit up there crying because you done broke your <laughs> neck or something stupid. Because you didn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> and it's funny because it also says here, in fact, you will never understand some commands you know what maybe i don't know if you guys remember but in one of our segments and i was talking about making up the bed mm -hmm. 
Yeah, yeah, we uh, Imani, yeah. And so it's, it states right here. It says, in fact, you will never understand some commands until you obey them first. Mm -hmm. Obedience unlocks understanding. Right. So she doesn't understand now. now. Right. But she will understand later. Later. And sometimes we want to understand before we <laughs> do the act. We're like, okay, why? That I'm like that too. No, like, I need no, to know I, why first, and then I'm gonna do it. And I it's like God's like a lot no. of us are like that. Yes. And it states that in the um, in the book here about that. That's what we do first. We mm -hmm. say, well, why? Right. And that's interesting that it talks about that because it's like now if you put it in a God's perspective, it's like. Don't ask me why. Like, because if he's supposed to be, if he's supposed to have the best interest at heart for right. you, why question? Like, why am I doing that? Right. Because you're supposed to trust that. Right. Trust. He's not gonna. Right. <laughs> that he's not gonna just have you out here willy nilly. And I think that's the fear. Like, we think that God is trying to like hurt us or something. I don't know about you. I've been reading the Bible. I'm like, people getting their heads cut off and all this. Like, I don't know about all this. Bro. And you're like, Lord, where is? But again, then it goes back to like, remember, this is not home and all that. Right. Like, so us being scared is like, you got to know there's more purpose long term. Exactly. After all this. Remember, and this is supposed to be what? Temporary. Temporary. So. Yeah, it's all coming together now. <laughs> We're trying to make all these connections <laughs> right. here. Oh my God. But yeah, and so um, I know here another highlight that I have um, is, and I, this is a small highlight, but it says, we make a list of the commands we like to obey. Um, I'm sorry. It says we make a list of the commands we like and obey those while ignoring the ones we think are unreasonable, difficult, expensive, or unpopular. It also states that I'll attend church, but I. this is the mm -hmm. example. I'll attend church, but I won't tithe. I'll read my Bible, but won't forgive the person who hurt me. Ooh. You might as well not do anything at all if that's the case. If you're going to do half of the stuff. <laughs> and it says, yet partial obedience is it's disobedience. It's still disobedience. So what you doing all that in the first place? <laughs> <laughs> you might as well just not do X, Y, Z because you're not doing the other parts. So whatever. Right. You might as well just stop. <laughs> <laughs> because that's not, that's not pleasing to God for sure, right? And it's funny here. It says, you know, in the book it says, James speaking to Christians said... We please God by what we do and not only by what we believe. So, mm -hmm. I thought that was a good point as well. And it says, why is obedience so pleasing to God? One, it states here, it proves you really love him. And Jesus said, if you love me, you will obey my commandments. So, yeah. Yeah. That was, that was, that was tough. That trust segment area is very, very for a lot of us because like he says right here i just just going back again saying ignoring the ones we think are unreasonable stuff that's difficult expensive or unpopular that that right there those commands are trying to obey but you ignore it because you're like uh-uh i don't know about this one <laughs> this is too difficult lord uh-uh lord this is a little bit this too expensive <laughs> <laughs> that's like too much money i don't know <laughs> This is unpopular. Everybody else doing right, this. Everybody but like, you mm -hmm. got me doing this. Right. I don't want to look stupid. <laughs> but that's and that's that's so that's facts. Like yeah. that's an everyday thing for a lot of us. Like, I mean, I, I don't know. I just think that's that's a lot of truth right there. Mm -hmm. And then the next point here in the book it states, God smiles when we praise and thank him continually. And I think that's something that we don't do enough mm -hmm. is, you know, giving him thanks. For the things and the little things that we don't even pay attention to, obviously. right? It's so much we take for granted. I don't even realize like the position that you're in. I'm telling you, some of the things that you that's not happening in your life, that's happening to other people's lives. It's like we take so much for granted. That's why I always like make yes. it a point to start my prayer with just giving thanks first, and then everything else after that. Yeah, because I mean. I mean, simple daily things of like your health. Your if, health. If you're in good health, there are here people with all types of illnesses. If you have a home, a to, shelter, right? right. That home, in fact, I mean, food on food. your table. People are scrapping for food. If you have children, there's people out here with no children. Like, this is the things that you have that you don't realize. 
I mean, little things, even like your hand, your fingers, right? Your, your eyes, eyes. You're not blind. No, you're not mute. Yeah. We take a lot of things for granted, like a lot of things for granted, and we gotta be. We have to be more appreciative mm -hmm. because it could be. It could be worse. It could be worse. It really could be worse. And you know, I give it to those who do are. And it's funny because does it make you feel like people who have, are who are more fortunate, more, less appreciative than those who are less fortunate and are a little bit maybe more right. appreciative? Because if they were in your position, because right, they're looking at you like, what you talking about? Well, you are <laughs> not satisfied. Like you have it. This is almost basically all to some people. Like what exactly. you have is like all to people. Some uh, some people, and then for others, we're like, oh, we're not satisfied. Mm -hmm. No, it's not enough. But you have to, that's why you need to be constantly appreciative and thankful and grateful for all of your surroundings, mm -hmm. period, your environment. Alone. People out here living in countries that are being terrorized, genocide and all types of crazy Bomb. nonsense going on. And you live in a neighborhood in like, peace and quiet. We take this, the little, little stuff from, and it's not even little, but we, take, it, we it, don't it, think it, about it. Not, we don't think yeah. about it. We don't think about it at all. And so... Um, going on, the <clears throat> next point here in the book it states, "God smiles when you use our, when when we use our abilities." So, um, using our abilities are for here an example. It talked about the Noah. We're still on the Noah. Um, it talks about the flood. It says, "God gave Noah these simple instructions: be fruitful and increase in numbers and fill the earth. Everything that lives and moves will be food for you, just as I gave you the green plants." I now give you everything. And so, you know, little things like that. Dang, like, I didn't think about, like, plants. Bruh, yeah. it's like, it, it blows my mind. Don't you just be sitting down just thinking about stuff? Like, I, I literally would sit here and just think. I'm like, I'm like Dan, you gave us fruit, vegetables. And it, it grows out the ground. Like, literally, it grows out the ground. Like, how? Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, wow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I just be sitting there like thinking like And we don't think about these things at all. Like this is not, it needs to be our daily thing. Like that we really need to appreciate because it just blows my mind. It's like, oh my gosh. Like food literally grows off of the ground. Like and apples on the planet. And right. And it's like a process. Like harvesting. Is. Harvesting the is sunlight like. with the walk and the whole nine yard. <laughs> so I'm not the only one. I'm just no. like. Oh my gosh. <laughs> and we take it a lot for granted. Yes. Like, man. But it says here that God enjoys watching every detail of your life. Every detail of your life. Can you imagine? That's like the hairs growing in your body. Like you He know. knows all the hairs. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. But like you were saying earlier today, I don't want to be bothering God. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, what? <laughs> but. You know, I really had that, I had that moment where I was just like, you know, you know, you come, you say, God wants you to come to him and have the relationship with him and talk with him. But sometimes I'll be thinking like, man, God, I, it's all these, all your children here on earth. I don't want to be bothering you with some nonsense. Right now, if anything, I need to be more thankful. Right. I need to be saying, you know, God, just thank you for all that you've done and all that you're going to continue to do. And that's it. And that's it. I'm a, I'm because a, if I come with a problem, you're going to be like, you, really? That's how, really? This is so funny. How we just act sometimes. <laughs> so, I used to be like, you know, I'm not going to bother God today. Just be thankful. <laughs> I was, I'm was going to be quiet over here. I was having, having worries and stuff and doubt. I'll be mm -hmm. like, you know what? Maybe not today. But I'm not going to come to you today with that. No. That's too funny. <laughs> uh, it, I mean, but it makes you think like, I mean, can you imagine uh, the number of problems in like, that, or prayers that people who do come to God, I just be like, you know, I'm, I won't be the one. To Your pray. request list might be a little too full. So I'm gonna keep it moving. I'm gonna, I'm gonna figure it out on my own. For I'm gonna work it out. And today is a thankful day. Right. And then go back tomorrow. Be like, maybe today is a thankful day. So I can't. Not today, Lord. Um, but yeah. And so here it also states that God intentionally gifted us differently for His enjoyment. So this is, I like this, this, this segment that we're getting ready to go into about just kind of being the person that God created you to be. And it says here, he has made some to be athletic and some to be analytical. So you all have your own specific gifts. And I like this segment because it's saying that your abilities don't try to be anything else but what God mm -hmm. wants you to be. 
And it says, all these abilities can bring a smile to God's face. It's also stated here that he has shaped up, he has shaped each person in turn. Now he watches everything we do. But it says, you don't bring glory or, or pleasure to God by hiding your abilities or by trying to be someone else. So, you know, be who God created you to be. And um, that's, I think that's a, I think that's a really strong point because yeah. I think a lot of us see things and we try to now become things mm -hmm. and be who God created you to be. And that's hard because you're st sometimes you feel like you're trying to what, figure that out, still figure mm -hmm. that out. But just know that if you have, and if you're talking with God, you, you know, bring God into the picture. He will, he will, he will definitely guide the way for that so that you don't feel like you have to be anybody else, right. but you specifically. And their so. spots already taken. Anyway, right. And so. don't make nobody <laughs> try to make you be somebody that you're not supposed right. to be too, because you got people out here trying to, I need you to be like more like your this sibling or more like this parent. Right. I need you to get more of these traits and then, you know, less mm -hmm. of this, like be, you know, and, and have God help you work through whatever abilities he's given you. Right. So, yeah. Um, here it states that God says in the book, it says, you have no right to argue with your creator. You are merely a clay pot shaped by a potter. The clay doesn't ask, why did you make me this way? <laughs> See that goes back to that again. Why? 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 We use that word a lot. We yeah. Why? 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 Tell me now. <laughs> But you can't argue with the creator. There's That's, a purpose for everything. There's a purpose for everything. And here it says in the book, it says, in fact, the Bible says, God generously gives us everything for our enjoyment. So he, got, he gave you everything you need for your enjoyment. Um, as far as your abilities and all those things. So, And here it says, parents do not require their children to be perfect or even mature in order to enjoy them. And that's mm -hmm. true. You enjoy your kids when they're full little toddlers. <laughs> yeah. When they're full little teenagers, you now, every stage. Now I will say yeah, through every stage, which yeah. is crazy because sometimes you do catch yourself. I know I've catch myself be like, I need you to grow up a little like cause like there's stages because you be like, you want your child to understand like responsibility and stuff. You're like, come on, you know what I mean? But you I still enjoy them even mm -hmm. with them in, through all of their stages. It's like you like, now you know. <laughs> But yes, it's, it's, that's very true. I believe that. And um, it also states here that what God looks at is the attitude of your heart. Is, is, is it pleasing him or deepest? Oh, is pleasing him our deepest desire? So when he looks at our heart, he's asking, is pleasing? Is, is ple <laughs> We're being asked, is pleasing him our deepest desire? Mm -hmm. So when he looks at the attitude of our heart in a lot of different situations and I like that. And so that was, that's the points that I got for that day. And I think that um, those were good points. So from, you know, trust mm -hmm. to, um, <laughs> you know, just um, using your abilities and also um, uh, obedience. obedience. There you go, there you go. Yep, so obedience and trust and using your abilities and the way God created you to you. So I think I think this was a good day. I really mm -hmm. like this day. This day was good. So um, I don't know if okay, yes, yeah, so I don't know if you the points of ponder. <clears throat> the points of ponder says God smiles when I trust him. Verse to remember the Lord is pleased with those who worship him and trust his love. Psalms one forty seven eleven C E V. And the question to consider is, since God knows what is best, in what areas of my life do I need to trust him the most? Well, right now, <laughs> right now, I put like, you know, my career a little bit. <laughs> career? That's a good and money. I think a lot of people think sometimes, you know, money. I don't know why that, but I guess it's a survival. It's a survival. It's a survival, it's a survival yeah. instinct. So you're just like, I just want to make sure everything it's is good, good. good. But you got to, that's that trust. Mm -hmm. And that's that obedience and just knowing, like, look, be obedient. Don't worry about it. Like, you know, trust God. It's handled. Like, yeah. Yeah. So I definitely put finances as well. I think that's yeah. one of the biggest thing. And then, like, I would just sit there, like, overanalyze. And then that overanalyzing causes doubt. And it's like, okay, God obviously knows, like, he the situation is right. Analytical. <laughs> Girl. <laughs> So you gonna I'm glad you noticed that too. Because I remember taking one of these little quizzes at work. 
almost the majority of my answers was like, you're an analyst. You, oh, you analyze everything. I'm like, yep. They created you that way, but you gotta like- <laughs> Tone it down a little bit. Work, work with little, God, yeah, work with God. I'm a little, I'm analyzing every little thing and it's just like, okay, can you just put that a little side, a little side, Justin, a little bit. fill me in, in right. there, in there. Put me in exactly. there through all that analytical and those doubts, put me in there and exactly. I will work it out for you. Exactly. Don't worry, because I created you that way. Exactly. I just gotta get you, work you out, work mm -hmm. through those mm -hmm. kinks and stuff. Right. <laughs> Work through them cakes right there. You a little go, a little over the edge, a little bit with it. I right, imagine don't, like you're right, good, yeah. but you, you do a little. Don't dark. take it overboard. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, and that's and that's something that you have to understand. That mm -hmm. you know, we're all you're understanding with each other ourselves, right. knowing that okay, these are traits that I know I have, but right. let me not go too far with it. Exactly. You know what I mean? And bring God there and say, okay, God, <laughs> and bring it together. <laughs> I trust in you now mm -hmm. to bring me back right. <laughs> off the edge because exactly. I'm going way far beyond, right? <laughs> then I need to you know, like, infinity and in <laughs> <laughs> with these capabilities. I'm doing the most. Right, doing the most. Oh man! But that now brings us into day, day 10. ten. Yes, it says the heart of worship. So here I got in the book. It says give our give yourselves to God. Mm -hmm. and surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteous purpose so he he needs you to be analytical right <laughs> right but just we got to surrender right so <laughs> just, just stop the surrender question. <laughs> you got to surrender that right so that you can be used exactly <laughs> there you go for his purpose right his righteous purpose and it states here that the heart of worship is surrender and surrender is an unpopular word. Mm -hmm. Very true. Also like here it says, much like the word submission. I know I've had plenty of conversations with plenty of people about that word submission. Oh they my don't like God. that word. Or Especially using females. That, or, or using that word for what it, uh, for other means yeah. of what it really means. You're like, wait a minute, pause. <laughs> You know, it's not what you think is submission. You going over and over and beyond yeah. with it. Again, that go, you going over That's and beyond infinity. with it. That is not for God's righteous purpose. <laughs> <laughs> you tried it. <laughs> so it states here, it says, it implies losing or no one wants to be, a, and no one wants to be a loser. Mm -hmm. It's really, to me, also uh, that sacrifice. I think sacrifice also yeah. is a part of what people feel like they're losing. Like, I sacrifice, I'm losing a sense of myself mm -hmm. or whatever. But you, when it's in God's context, it's, it's used properly. Right. So, um, but yeah, it says here, surrender invokes the unpleasant images of admitting defeat in battle, forfeiting a game, or yielding to a younger, uh, a stronger opponent. So that's why I think that, you know, we get that negative, mm -hmm. that negative, kind of negative connotation, yeah, yeah. connotation of that. But it states here that if winning is everything, surrender, surrendering is unthinkable. So that goes back again to um, some of the other segments we were talking about, that whole winning mm -hmm. and battling. Like, that's not... It's not what it's about. It's <clears throat> not what it's about. And so that's why for some people, surrendering is like, no, because I, or unthinkable because winning is... The, right. the prime goal for them. Mm -hmm. So, and it states here that we would rather talk about winning, succeeding, and overcoming and conquering than yielding, submitting, o obeying, and surrendering. And that's very true. Those words are like last. Right? Those are against <laughs> our flesh. Like right. Those are against our flesh. Mm -hmm. We want to win, succeed, and overcome. <laughs> it's like, no, it's counter my flesh. <laughs> it doesn't feel right. I have a goal and I'm going to and I'm going to succeed in that because we're trying to control right right so and that's where that that's where I come from this like you said instead of yielding and submitting obeying surrendering those words are like not even in some people's vocabulary <laughs> <laughs> but um here it states and this now this goes to the point that we're making here and that's why I highlighted it here in this book and I thought it was a good point it says there are three barriers and that, that block our total surrender to God. And a part of that is because fear, pride is a big mm -hmm. one in a lot of people, and confusion. Mm -hmm. You are just all over the place and you don't even realize you're confused. So it says, we don't realize how much God loves us. We want to control our own lives. And that's why I highlight that point because that's... We think we know what's best. We think we know what's best, mm -hmm. what we know is best for us. And 
We don't actually come to find out. God knows what's best. And it's hard to surrender and yield and obey because we are trying to what? Control our own lives. And we misunderstand the meaning of surrender. Oh, yeah, that's the one. Uh, of letting go, basically. I highlighted too. Yeah, of letting go. When we don't realize how much God loves us. It, I don't know, like, what? It's like, what do we think? Like, do we think that God intentionally wants to, like, harm us? us? Yeah. yeah. I, I, think that's, I think that's ultimately because we don't want to be harmed. So right. we're going to keep ourselves out of harm's we way. We yeah. want to flee any type of <laughs> suffering, pain. We don't want any of it. So it's like, okay, God. I don't know about all this. And now that takes us back to Jesus. Right. Jesus, do you think that he, he, he knew that the, his suffering was coming? Right. And it's like, but he obeyed. Yeah, he he was obedient and he and he surrendered. Because can you imagine that though? Like knowing, like, oh my God, this is this is this is what you you're telling me. Right. God is where I'm gonna go. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna go through this suffering. He could be like, uh -uh, I got <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> but he obeyed right. and he surrendered and he yielded. Mm -hmm. And that, I think, and I think that's what our fear comes in because it's like. We don't want to be harmed, and right. we don't want to hurt, and we don't want to see that. And that's tough for a lot of us, because, I mean, can you imagine that? Well, no, um, I just, I think about those things, mm -hmm. and I think, I think that's another reason uh, for us to be trying to protect our flesh and all that, because it's like, yes, I can't imagine, I can't imagine at all Jesus seeing, like, he knowing, like, God telling him, like, this is what... This is your way. This is the will. This is the will. This is your will. And you're like, I'm about to go through beat a beat down? <laughs> you're telling me I'm about to go through a beat down? How do I obey and surrender to that? Like, how do I say, you know, Lord, I trust you? Like, because that's scary. But right. he he wasn't scared. And he obviously, you know, he just, Lord God, you, Father, you said this is it. Yeah. He, he, he wept. He reacted like most of us would do. He wept yeah. and he was like, why have you abandoned me? And you know, yeah. he reacted the same, same way, way we would. Yeah. But he so, still did it. Yeah. Yeah. And at the end of the day, he rose again and, yep. and it accomplished his purposes. So it accomplished his purpose. Cause obviously that goes back to he he probably had to understand like this is temporary. Right. He change had, your perspective. Yeah, change your perspective. Right. Yeah. <clears throat> like I wanna I wanna live, you know, in the fruitful land. Of, right. You know what I mean? With you guys, you. So, mm -hmm. yeah. But then it goes here, makes a point about again, can I trust God? Can we trust God? Can you trust God? Do you trust God? That's a good question. That's a really strong question. Can you trust God? Some people are like, no. That's And that's rough. Because you should want to trust God. You should want to be able to say, like, you really know what's best mm -hmm. and yield and obey and surrender to that you know what i mean because it says trust is an essential ingredient to surrender so you have to be able to trust him in order to surrender mm -hmm. and it says you won't surrender to god unless you trust him but you can't trust him until you know him better mm -hmm. and that go that's that right there that point is strong because in order to trust god you have to know him exactly you have to right you exactly. have to know him you have to know him and then once you know him, you're like, okay, right. I know I, what I he trust. wouldn't do, what he would do. I know, you know, what he's thinking, what he has in mind. And then that makes it easier. For it makes it right. It makes it easier for trust yeah. him. And then in order to trust him, you'll be able to surrender. Right. So you have to have those ingredients. Um, but yeah, um, another point, I don't know if you, I know. Go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I highlighted the point you had the hard okay. work, but what I put, um, I think, <clears throat> um, due to our past and like, the bad things that happen to us, it kind of has this idea in our head, like, okay, if if I'm yielding to God, something bad is gonna happen to me, maybe because like relationship you had with your parents or relationship you had maybe with, I don't know, somebody in your life that treated you with less than love, it, it, it changes your perspective, but. Yeah, or even just somebody you trusted. Say right. that you trusted somebody and then you felt like that was broken. Mm -hmm. Now you're like, I have trust issues. Now. Right, I have trust issues, so yeah. it's like, how do we go from from there. from there to completely trusting God is hard. So it is. Yeah, because especially you put like 
your whole heart right into something and it gets broken or gets harmed mm -hmm. or hurt you're like oh no and you never put, again <laughs> right and barriers you, you, put a yeah. barrier, you start putting barriers up trust barriers you start mm -hmm. just i'm hiding you know that whole thing so and that, and, and you got to be able to take those layers off and that's that's the hard part is trying yeah. to build take down those layers mm -hmm. so that then you can trust again yeah mm -hmm. yeah so and here it says when we completely surrender ourselves to jesus we discover that he is not a tyrant but a savior not a boss but a brother and not a detector but a friend so you know those are some those are some strong things to know that he's your brother and he's your friend and he's your you know savior and here another point it says admitting our limitations it says that, that desire to have complete control is the cause of so much stress in our lives we just don't want to give it all to God. We don't want to give it up, period. <laughs> right. We don't want to let it go. Uh-uh, no. And that could be the root of all your problems. <laughs> it's just so funny how, like, just how this works. It is because I think we realize that we do try to control. That's right. just, just it. I think we try to control a lot of it. And so letting go and saying, you know what, I'm going to just, just give it all mm -hmm. up to God and just, it will work itself out. It's right. hard because you're like, no, because I know that that bill probably coming. Like, no, mm -hmm. <laughs> like, if I just be like, no, because I remember there was a point where, like, me and my husband, our mortgage was like not about to be paid. But God, I'm telling you right now, God, oh my God, when I say God came through, we want to talk about not worrying and saying it's gonna be okay, and I'm just give it up to God. He does take care of things. You, it actually is very surprising. Mm -hmm. It's actually very surprising. You're like, uh, I feel like might just come out the sky. Like, <laughs> <laughs> but it's true when you just obey, like when you just give it up and just yield and surrender. You be He's surprised. Like, okay, I can work with you that now. You will be right. surprised what he brings to the forefront. Exactly. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. I mean, I'll tell you, man. I, you'd be a witness. You'd be like, you know, no, I know. <laughs> I'm going to tell you right now. I can tell you. Like, and that's exactly what he wants. He wants you to be a witness. I'm Thank telling you. you right now. When you have no worries, you surrender it all. You just be like, look, it's going to be okay. I'm telling you, it's going to be okay. I promise you that. It's going to be okay. Mm -hmm. It will, y'all. It's hard, though. It's hard because control is, I think, in a lot of our flesh. Mm -hmm. Is that I don't want to I don't want to give this up. All right. I know what's best. Right. That, that's the control that's part. That's the pride. It's, I know what's best. That's the pride. That's the pride. I know what's best for me. So I ain't gonna let nobody else tell me, mm -hmm. right? But it also says here, life is a struggle. But what most people don't realize is that our struggle, like Jacob in the Bible, is really a struggle with God. Wow. So if you could just meditate on any areas of your life that you're struggling with. That you're actually not struggling with life itself. You're struggling with God. You're struggling with God. <laughs> God is life and he is going to whip you into shape. And that's probably why a lot of people run into brick walls because God trying to is trying to use Right, you obviously that. that's God like trying to give you a message. Right, because like it says right here, life is a struggle, but what most people don't realize is the struggle is not. Right. Just like how Jacob was like literally wrestling with God. That's a symbolism right there that the struggle is literally with God. So if you like we said, if you're struggling <laughs> It's a struggle with God. He trying to help you. He was trying to yield you back. And here it says that A.W. Uh, Tozer. Yeah, Tozer mm -hmm. said, The reason why many are still troubled, still seeking, and still making little forward progress is because they haven't yet come to the end of themselves. Oh my gosh. That end to yourself phase. Sometimes that's necessary for some it, people. You're not lying. But I think, it, like, for some people, it's hard to know, like, how do I come to the end of myself? I guess when you, you, I mean, God don't want to beat you down. But he will if you <laughs> have to. Just like how, like, with my job and stuff, like, I literally came to the end of myself with my job. And that's how I realized, now I can work with you. Me and you both. Me and you both. Because, you know, you start thinking, like, I was making good money. But you know what? I have come to the end of the road with right. this job and this money, right? Like, I know I'm going to be okay. Like, But it's like, you know, some people can't do that. Some people can't quit on can't, it. Yeah. yeah. And I understand that. But, like, it's just like, 
when you're trying to really literally wondering why you're struggling or you really stressing is because when you're trying to start start take control of every single situation it you will you will god will have you run right into that brick boom mm-hmm. it's the same thing and that's exactly what boom. i was going, going the through. same thing brick wall brick wall brick wall like applying job after i'm like why is like am i not getting it and finally i literally like screamed at god like what is going on and that's what everything everything started to unravel i was like wow and he'll do that and he, he will do that god will do that and it's funny because here it also states that we aren't god and never will be that's that trying to know everything control everything i gotta know why we can't be god and Ooh. never will be when he said if we try to be like god that's when we end up most like satan who desired the same that joint shook to me i was like Oh my, we're ending up like children of the devil when we try to do that. <laughs> we gotta be careful. Right. We gotta and be careful. That fear, pride, and confusion, all that is rooted in, rooted in Satan. I'm just like, wow. Like, just making the connection. I'm like, oh my gosh. That's, that's, that's what, what happened. happened. That's what's going he on. He fell because of pride. Hello. <laughs> so it's like, <laughs> hello. Look up. <laughs> but yeah, and there you go. And those are the answers right there. All the connections that we're trying to make. Mm-hmm. And here it also states that then then when we notice that God gave others characteristics we don't have, we respond with envy, jealousy, and self-pity. And that's such a shame because you also have characteristics that he gave you as well. He gave you those characteristics to that are used for your specific purpose purpose to benefit others not everybody's gonna have the same thing right exactly and that don't think that your thing is so small because it it stays here and i can't wait to get that part that some of the small things are the biggest things are making the biggest impact Mm -hmm. that a lot of the impact will not be known or known to other men or whatever but that your impact that you're making is a big deal in god's eyes Mm -hmm. it's a huge deal in the god and that's why he created you the way he created you so don't be too busy looking at somebody else and then you miss your own stuff that you were supposed to be doing because you're busy looking at other people's gifts and talents and stuff like that and abilities Mm -hmm. he created you and molded you just the way you need to be so yep but it goes on and making a point about what it means to surrender and talking about surrender and it states our highlighted here a point that says surrendered people obey god's word even if it doesn't make sense that's how you know what god speaking when it doesn't make sense because i can see him be now like what what <laughs> god tell me how i'm gonna warm up this food in the refrigerator <laughs> possible that that will get hot in the refrigerator to please tell me like that kind of not makes sense you right. like but it's gonna happen somehow right and then you're gonna be so amazed like oh my gosh <laughs> that's how it works <laughs> that's exactly how it works when it don't make sense when it don't it. make sense but it, it it will and it will for sure it does make sense to god and it, will, and it will make sense right like yeah so that is too funny but it also states here, or the point that I um, highlight on this day, also states that you know you're you know you're surrendered to God. You know you're surrendered to God when you rely on God to work things out instead of trying to manipulate others, force your agenda, and control the situation. Mm-hmm. Which I think we had been saying right. this whole time. Like you trying to say that's Satan's work, the confusion. <laughs> That's the confusion. He gonna confuse you, or the jealousy, the self pity, and all that is that is Satan all over that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, when I seen the fear, pride, and confusion, I was like, that's Satan's name all over that. Bam. You gotta be able to identify. Right. It. That's another part is be able to identify. identify it, yeah. Knowing like, okay, wait a minute, am I? Is that Satan working? Mm-hmm. I can't do that. I can't have that. When I God told you something and it don't make sense, all of a sudden you all confused in your mind. Yep. So, and it states here in the book that it says the Bible says surrender yourself to the Lord and wait patiently for him. Sometimes y'all need to just wait. That's the I think just, that's one of the toughest things. Toughest mm-hmm. things. Oh, my patience waiting. is like this. Ooh, <laughs> ooh Lord, work on me. Lord. <laughs> my patience sometimes goes out the window fast. I'll be like, I need you to get it right now. You know, I need to get it right now. I need to have it right now. 
Cause you gotta wait on him. Noah built a boat for in 120 <laughs> years. <laughs> patience is something. Can you talk about patience? Are you serious? <laughs> Yo, we calculate they and look on calculate them 305 days, you know. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's how it was. I mean, yeah, I'm assuming that's kind of how they able to calculate the days I guess in so, years, yeah. but 120 years. Abraham was like what 90 when he got his first bruh. <laughs> so bruh. When he got his first child. You have to wait on God. That is a it's like a month. It's, it's a mandatory yeah, thing. It's a month. You have to it's wait. Like, be patient. Oh man, that's funny. Yeah, 120 days. I didn't think about that. I'm still uh, like thinking about 120 years. Ooh, yeah, years. I'm sorry. I said days. Yeah, hundred years. Years. <laughs> I don't have 120 minutes. <laughs> you can talk about years. Yo. So here it also says that instead of trying harder, you trust more. You have to trust more. Knowing you're surrendered or know you're surrendered when you don't react to criticism and rush to defend yourself. Mm -hmm. Ooh, a lot of us that rush to defend. Oh, we love clap. What is that? Clapping back. What'd you say? Excuse you? <laughs> right. We love. That's the, that's the oh, age we're living in right yeah, now. Yeah, that defend. Like, you don't need to. You don't need to react to every and little you don't need, thing. You know, like, yes, and, so, and people don't realize you don't need to defend yourself. Especially if you're, if you are doing what God, you don't need to defend yourself. You don't, it's almost like you don't need to explain yourself. Mm -hmm. You don't need to. And you will receive criticism. Especially you will. if you're doing God's work as well. Don't think people going to be all honky. No, you're going to receive Again, criticism. think about Noah. They were looking at him like, you crazy. Like you, I don't need to defend myself on why this I'm doing this. Right. I don't need to tell you why. You know what I mean? Like I don't have I don't have to put. A, God told me that's people bondage right there. God told you are gonna. I can't even get the word. I know. Out. I know. You like. <laughs> people are never gonna be satisfied. Yeah, no, They're always gonna criticize, especially if you're doing God's work. Just right? Because they 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 want you to make sense of God, and you're like, well. We know that God sometimes will not make sense because it don't make sense to you right now. Don't mean it won't make sense. Later and I don't on. need to explain that to you. If you don't, I have the relationship. So talk to God about talk it. Talk to God about it. <laughs> I'm building this ark. <laughs> and if it took me 120 years, so be it. Chad, that's a long time. <laughs> <laughs> but you don't need to defend yourself. You just don't. And so he also says here, the most difficult area to surrender for many people is their money. That's both of our right both situation. That's right. That's a, I mean, and we're working. That's a work in progress. But I think I think we're getting a hold of that. Yeah. So it also says too that I want you want to live for God, but also you want to earn enough money to live comfortably exactly. and retire someday. But then here it goes. It says retirement is not the goal mm -hmm. of our surrendered life because it competes with God for the primary attention of our lives. It says here that Jesus said, you cannot serve both God and money. And wherever your treasure is, your heart will be also. So God, he, your heart, where your heart lies and how you, is, is very important because that was, that's what you will be seeking, right? Right, that determines who you're going to follow. Right. And, money or God. And you can't have both. Right. You can't, you can't do both. So... I thought that was I thought that was a good I thought that was a good point as well. Um, another point is the blessings of surrender, and it says that surrender doesn't weaken you; it strengthens you. So don't think that that's that's this is us trying to make positive of the word surrendering, letting go, and trying not to control every specific little thing. That surrendering it doesn't doesn't make you weak, or you know what I mean. Despite what society said, I think society plays up that word surrender and submission to make it seems like really negative like brings you down right like to do that you are like less like that's like who does that like no like and it's like no that actually strengthens you that's actually mm -hmm. something strong to do yeah to because be able to surrender that's yeah. something strong to do because everybody can't do it. right and so that doesn't make you a weak person you're strong for that because everybody can't do that. Everybody but, can't yeah. let go of control. Mm -hmm. Our mind has literally been distorted in so many ways that people don't even realize that. And you know, I highlight this because I never knew this. Did you know 
Um, I don't know if you guys know who the Salvation Army founder is or even his name, but his name here is William Booth. And he's the founder of Salvation Army. It says, the greatest of man's power is in the measure of his surrender. I never knew that. Mm -mm, me neither. I never knew that. I highlighted that because I was like, wow, I never even knew that. And then just the idea of Salvation Army. Like, you right, know. you don't even think about the Salvation. Hello? Duh. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, where were... Uh, th I thought that was just an interesting fact that I didn't know about... I didn't even know who the founder was of the Salvation Army. You'll find, Army. like, a lot of these uh, popular, famous people. Like, Rosa Parks. I didn't know, like, she had a strong relationship with God. Like, all these people. I'm like, wow. Like, all these known people. You'll find, like, they had a relationship with God. It's like, you didn't even know. It's crazy. Yeah. It's really crazy. And it also here, another point it makes, it says the best way to live, um, or it talks about the best way to live. And it says, if not, if not to God, you will surrender to the opinions or expectations of others, to money, which we've been talking about, to resentment, to fear, or to your own pride, lust, or ego. And it states here, you were designed to worship God. And if you fail to worship him, you will create other things, idols, which and he has in parentheses saying to give your life to. So you will give your life to all these other things when you should be giving your life to God and leaving it up to God, you know, and surrendering that. Um, and it says here, you are free to choose what you surrender to, which we're free of choice. We know that. Mm -hmm. But it says, but you are not free from the consequences of that choice. Please remember that, if anything, that yes, we are free to make our own choices, but you will deal you will with the consequences. consequences of your choices. That was a hard pill to swallow. Like, pill to swallow. God will allow you to go somewhere else, but he's not going to prevent those consequences from happening to you. And it's like, wow. Even like, it made me think about that story with David when he slept with um, Bathsheba and they had oh, a baby. Oh, yes, yes. Consequences. consequences. You want to talk about and consequences? David, of course, God loved David. David was a man after God's own heart. He had he had to suffer the consequences as well. You think God is not gonna let you suffer the consequences? Like you think you're just gonna get away? Right. Just because? Nah, right, no. 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 You're not gonna be like. No. You're going. The you consequences gonna, on their way. Yep. So and just so that so know that so know that you know and it says here that um, E. Stanley Jones said if you don't surrender to Christ. You surrender to chaos. I don't want to live in confusion. <laughs> I don't want to live in confusion. I don't want to live in the chaos. No. I need my house in order. Right. And that's God is a God right. of order. order. Bam. Boom. <laughs> Boom. God is a God of order. Not it confusion. Is. Okay? Not confusion. Confusion is the work of the enemy. Yes. And it says here, surrender is not the best way to live. Only way to live, y'all, and that's that's hard for. So I'm hoping that y'all out there, you hear him. He's right. That surrender is the best way to live. It's the only way to live, y'all. So don't think of it as a negative thing. And don't fight what it. society and the media is telling you. Yes, do not think it's a negative thing. You know, get that get that relationship, y'all. Get that relationship. Don't be this. I N D E P. <laughs> Don't be this. I N D E P. -E you know what that means? <laughs> okay. Don't be out here trying to be Miss Independent Woman. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. You better submit onto the Lord and let Him direct your right, path right. before you <laughs> out here in these streets looking foolish. Okay, looking stop. foolish. <laughs> That was a good one, though. Like, you out here trying to be out here. Right. <laughs> Shoot, do you know what S U R R is? <laughs> Look, Phil.
kill yourself with those <laughs> with that word right there. Oh my god. But no, here we go. Another point in May is you cannot fulfill God's purpose for your life while focusing on your own plans. And so um, it's okay to, you know, get things together, but make sure it's, you know, you're doing everything. Hopefully you're letting that and letting God in mm-hmm. and making sure he's f- being fulfilled and getting his purpose through you done. So, um, and another last point here, I think, yeah. Um, or maybe another, yeah, another, it says, so give it all to God, your past regrets. So your past regrets, just Anything that you just, the doubts and the worries, mm-hmm. give it to God. So it says your past regrets, your present problems, your future ambitions, your fears, your dreams, weaknesses, habits, hurts, and hangups. Just, <clears throat> just give it all to him. Take it all. <laughs> just, just take it all off of you and just say, look, I know I'm going to let you work out whatever it is, situations that you got going on that you feel needs work. I mean, I'm going to just stop taking control of this, let you work on that, God. I'm going to, you know work on these things and work and get it together because it says just give it all to him so everything just give it to him give it to him and um and it says here when you decide to live a totally surrendered life that decision will be tested so of don't course. think that when you surrender that it's just gonna be like okay right now and then you you won't have doubts like okay oh, hey, was this what i supposed to do all right why am i being tested no well, you're right. gonna be tested gonna because be tested. he wants to know that you have literally surrendered and you have that surrender has to be genuinely true so he knows that you have surrendered and says so sometimes it will it will mean doing incom um inconvenient unpopular and costly or seemingly impossible tasks so but when you surrender, you'll be surprised how he shows up, man. Mm-hmm. That's the part that when you get there, how he shows up. Like I was stating about, like, me and my husband, like, it was a point where our mortgage was not going to be. But, I mean, when you talk about show up, and he shows up in, like, show out. <laughs> and un, un, unspeakable things. Mm-hmm. You're like, what? But he showed up. He showed up. And I think that is hard because, you know, I can be like, man, we bothered me. But I didn't worry. I just let it. Girl, mm-hmm. I just let it go. I'm like, look. It was. His will be done. Right. So, and it says, it will often mean doing the opposite of what you feel like doing. So, okay. Gotta, Gotta fight that flesh. <clears throat> so, day 10 was a lot. <laughs> okay, day 10 was good I though. Think chapters, yeah. Yeah, I, mm-hmm. let me tell you something. Really good. And so, um, our day 10, uh, think about my purpose, what we have here says the point to ponder um, the heart of worship is surrender verse to remember surrender your whole being to him to be used for righteous purposes romans 6 13 b to ev and question to consider what area of my life am i holding back from god i don't know y'all answer that in the comments below <laughs> i was still working on that question i i was i was really trying to figure out what am i holding back from god and me it's full obedience like sometimes like you know when you, like you know he's telling you to do something but you're like was that really okay, him that. and it's like i don't know it's like that complete trust thing is like you know what, i know i have my walls up you know from like past situations like i don't trust i didn't think about that one. yeah, yeah. So like me being fully obedient and just like, and then when it's like when I don't do it, I I be like, see that's why. I'm with that. I'm I'm with that. I I never thought about it like that. I think when I got to that question, I just didn't even think about it like that. You said full obedience. That's that's tough. Yeah. Like you're. We you actually know, don't like. Yeah, we thing, we yeah. always on it. We're always measuring things. Yeah. So, you know, not analytical. And mm-hmm. I you know, like, I think I have my moments where I get analytical. I think only in a specific area specifically. Mm-hmm. But like, oh girl, yeah, I feel you on that. But. That leads us on to day 11. If you made it all the way to the end, I just want to say that you are the real MVP. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and watching to the Purpose Driven Life Discussion Series with me and Mrs. Lauren. Don't forget to subscribe to our channels for updates. And part two will be available on my channel next week. So stay tuned and don't forget to like and share it with a friend. All right. See you guys later. Bye.